Nexus 9800 is the first platform in the Nexus 9000 switch family to use Silicon One ASICs. As we mentioned in one of our previous videos, there are two switch models in the 9800 platform. The 9804, which will be available soon after the recording of this video, and the 9808, which is already available. In this chapter, we will focus on the 9808, which supports high density for 400G interfaces and 800G in the future, making it one of the most robust and scalable switches in the market. First, we'll start by describing the physical characteristics of this model and the advantages of each of its components, and then we will go into the specifics of how it works. There are two aspects that must be mentioned when talking about the 9800 platform physical architecture. Number one, the control plane, which includes the chassis and the supervisors. Number two, the data plane, which includes line cards and fabric models. In terms of control plane, the 9808's 16 rack unit chassis is designed for resiliency supporting two supervisors in high availability mode. In terms of data plane redundancy, up to eight fabric models, up to four fan trays, and up to three powered trays with multiple power supplies each are supported. Let's zoom into the control plane, starting with the chassis. One of the main characteristics of the Nexus 9800 is that it is mid-plane free. What does it mean? To answer that, let's start by defining what a midplane is. A midplane is commonly used in modular platforms to provide connectivity between line cards and fabric models. This represents an extra piece of hardware inside the switch chassis, which obstructs the cooling airflow and could also represent a single point of failure. If you bend a pin on the midplane, the entire switch must be taken out of service and disassemble to replace that midplane. In the Nexus 9808 chassis, line cards and fabric models are directly attached to each other, so each fabric model is connected to all line cards and vice versa. Without a midplane blocking the airflow path, this chassis design delivers maximized cooling efficiency under a compact form factor without the need for large cooling fans delivering a sustainable yet powerful switching platform. Now, what about the supervisor? The Cisco Nexus 9808 chassis supports redundant half-width supervisors that manage control plane functions. The Nexus 9808 works at 100% of its capacities with only one supervisor. The redundant supervisor is for high availability only. When using two supervisors, each supervisor will work in either active or standby roles so that if there is supervisor failure, the standby module can become active. As of the recording of this video, the Nexus 9800 Supervisors CPU complex is based on the 4-core 2.4 GHz Broadwell CPU. It has a default memory size of 32 GB and there is a built-in 128 GB SSD to provide additional onboard non-volatile storage. But it doesn't stop there. This supervisor also provides expandable DRAM and a multi-core CPU architecture that provides sufficient computer power and resources to support C-group-based Linux containers in which third-party applications can be installed and run in a well-contained environment. The onboard SSD provides extra storage for logs, image files, and third-party applications. Also remember that the operating system for the switch, whether that's an XOS or ACI, runs here as well, making the supervisor the management point for the platform. After talking about the robust control plane on this platform, let's now talk about its data plane capabilities. There are multiple reasons to make line rate capacity in our switches a critical part. For example, 
high levels of consolidation and servers access to 100G interfaces, or low latency and high scalability for solutions such as IP media, which stream high definition voice and video for thousands or millions of users at the same time. In addition to this, keeping a healthy level of oversubscription or even no oversubscription at all is fundamental for today's networking needs. Line cards are key components to provide connectivity and avoid oversubscription. The Nexus 9808 switch supports multiple 400G ports line cards. For example, the X9836DM-A has 36 QSFP56 DD based ports with 400G support and backwards compatibility with 100G optics. It is ideal for port bandwidth transition and migration with the ability to connect 2 per 200G, 4 per 100G, 4 per 25G, and 4 per 10G breakout options through a single 400G port. This line card offers a 12.6 billion packets per second performance and includes a 4 core 2.4 GHz Worldwide processor, 32 GB of RAM memory, and 3 Silicon One ASICs that allow us to provide 14.4 terabits per second throughput capabilities with line rate MaxSec on all its 36 ports using 256 bits AES. However, we previously said that there is no mid-plane on this platform. So, how does connectivity on a line card like this work? Well, we said that each X9836DM-A line card uses three Silicon One ASICs. Each of those ASICs is divided into up to six slices. The first three slices are used for access ports connectivity and the remaining three slices connect to fabric models. If you are interested in knowing more about the Silicon One ASIC, we will go through the details of its architecture in another video, so stay tuned. Now, to understand how connectivity happens in and out this line card, we need to understand how fabric models work in the Nexus 9800 platform. The Cisco Nexus 9808 supports up to 8 fabric modules delivering up to 14.4 terabits per second per line card, with a 7 plus 1 line rate redundancy. That means that if I have 8 fabric modules running and I suddenly lose one, the platform will still work at 100% of its capacity, providing graceful degradation on failure while still delivering 14.4 terabits per second per line card. The system continues to function even if only one fabric module is operational. Each fabric module uses two Silicon One ASICs. Going back to the line cards then, and as I mentioned before, each line card will be physically attached to every fabric module directly and without a midplane. That way, the ASICs located in the line cards will be connected to the ASICs located in the fabric models, providing 2.4 teras on every line card to fabric module connectivity for a 19.2 teras total bandwidth capacity. This allows the Nexus 9808 to offer direct and efficient communication between line cards and fabric models. I think that brings me to the most specific type of communication happening within the switch. Communication between ASICs. Think of this as a little switch within the switch itself. It can occur in three ways. Intra-ASIC, intra-line card, and inter-line cards. First, intra-ASIC. When a packet arrives to the ingress pipeline of the line card slice, if the destination ports belongs to the same ASIC slides, it is simply forwarded. However, if the destination port is assigned to a different slice than the one used by the source port, the packet will be sent through the ASIC buffer to the egress pipeline of the destination slice. Second, intraline card. When the packet arrives to the ingress line card slice, 
it will be sent to a fabric facing slides through its chair buffer. Then, the packet is switched to the ASIC that holds the destination port by sending the packet to the fabric model ASIC. Once there, the packet is switched through its share buffer to the destination ASIC fabric facing slice, and finally sent to the egress pipeline on the destination slice. It is important to remember that all this happens on the same line card through their corresponding fabric modules. And finally, interline cards. When a packet arrives to the ingress line card slice, it will be sent to the fabric facing slice through its shared buffer. Then, the packet is switched to the ASIC that holds the destination port by sending the packet to the fabric module ASIC. Once there, the packet is switched through its chair buffer to the destination ASIC fabric facing slice and finally sent to the egress pipeline on the destination slice. In this case, traffic is flowing between different line cards through their corresponding fabric modules. If there are multiple fabric modules on a switch, traffic will be distributed to all of them based on a folded closed topology. Where fabric module A6 work as the spines and line card A6 work as leaves. As mentioned before, this will be covered in detail in the Silicon One ASIC architecture video. In summary, the new Cisco Nexus 9800 platform provides a new solution that makes the way components interconnect more efficient, allowing us to handle high volumes of bandwidth and in turn, reducing possible points of failure with a highly redundant platform. Hand in hand with the Silicon One family of ASICs, it provides high levels of scalability and agility in flow management to optimize package delivery. Although we focus on the 9808 model in this video, remember that there are other members of the 9800 family, like the 9804, that will be available very soon, so stay tuned.